Hello, Sunday School students, and welcome to Sunday School Online. I am your teacher for this session, Deaconess Robin Miller, and I come to you by way of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the community of Northside, where our pastor is Bishop James Chapman, our First Lady, Lady Robin Chapman, and where we proudly proclaim as a church family, there is a God in Bethlehem and Jesus is his name. As is my custom, I'm going to go over announcements while people are coming into class. So please remember to go to our GBTAC Cincinnati YouTube channel. We have many more videos there for additional students. We have primary videos where Sister Casey Fisher is taking our students on an adventure. We have classes for older students where Sister Tere Deloach is putting something on their mind. And adults, you have not been left out. Please go to our GBT ac.org or .org website to get the telephone number for our telechurch format and also the access code is listed. Join us every Sunday morning live 9 o'clock a.m. as the Lord allows for your Sunday school lesson. We have very knowledgeable teachers that break that word down for our life application and understanding. While you're there, please get two other numbers. The second one, our prayer line number, you are not in this alone. Call our pastors, they're here to pray with you to also talk to you about salvation. You can talk to them about setting up an opportunity to be baptized in the name of Jesus. You can talk to them about more concerning Christ living on the inside of you because you are not alone. Remember, we study about God sending back, or in our studies, we talked about God sending back his spirit as the comforter so we don't have to do life by ourselves. Selves. So please reach out for prayer and it can be on other things as well. Those are just some examples that you can call and they will pray with you. The third and last number that I encourage you to get while you're on our website Get our office telephone number. Make an appointment to speak with our bishop. Introduce yourself. Allow him to introduce himself and let him know that you have been stopping by the temple. Please remember to like, to subscribe, and this is your invitation to come back for additional services. We have our live worship experience every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. as the Lord allows. We have our prayer services Monday nights, our Bible classes 7 o'clock Tuesday nights on our YouTube platform, Facebook platform, Instagram. Please don't deprive yourself of the word. And we also have community events coming up. Check our webpage for more information. Stop by the services for additional announcements. And with that said, we're going to move on in our class. Thank you for joining us for Sunday School Online. So it is time for our review. Last week, we discussed Ananias heals Saul. So in our conclusion point, it was again, we see the necessity of prayer in our lesson. And that was from last week. God showed Paul a vision of his sight being restored while in prayer, and Ananias learned of his mission to Paul in prayer. Prayer is an important connection with God. God knows our end from the beginning. He doesn't judge people in the same manner man does. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. The latter part of the verse states, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 
Paul was a chosen vessel of Christ. To be chosen means one who is the object of choice or of divine favor. An elect person, and that is defined from merriamwebster.com. We too are chosen to spread the good news of Christ to those around us. So for our homework, we were supposed to read ahead for this week's lesson and answer the question, what was the Apostle Paul's name before it was changed to Paul? Now, if you read last week's lesson, you already know the answer because I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but I use Paul's new name which is Paul, instead of his old name, which was listed in our lesson or noted in our lesson. So let's see what it was. This is just one place where it states Paul's previous name, but there were other scripture verses. So if you have a different one, that's okay, as long as you have the same answer. So Acts chapter 13, verse 9 in the King James Version, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. So his name before it was Paul was Saul. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but when I referenced an example from last week, I also used the king that was named the same name, Saul. So you had lots of hints to get to that answer. So hopefully you came up with that same answer and you know what that means. You are a homework hero. Thank you so much for doing your homework. It is so appreciated. Remember what King David says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I would not trespass, commit any wrong, do anything incorrect against you, make an infraction against your law. So, with that, if you are not a homework hero, I invite you to join the Homework Hero Squad. Please become a part of my Homework Heroes. So this week, we're talking about God uses Paul on Malta. Our lesson text is Acts chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Our golden text or the focus verse is Acts chapter 28, verse 8. So the point, the reason, the purpose of us looking at this lesson, our aim, and that is we should pray for others and use our faith to help them in any way we can. So with the aim as a child of God, in reference to prayer, you have an access and a privilege that God hears you as his child. As your parent's child, as your grandparent's child, as your sister, your brother, or a bestie, or a teammate, you have certain accesses to that person that other people may not feel that they have. Yeah, they can walk up to the teacher and say the exact same thing that you can, but with relationship comes opportunity. So we have an opportunity in talking to God, in our communications with God, which is prayer to God and bringing other people up in front of the Lord and letting him know and asking him, petitioning him, God, so-and-so has the situation. Would you please bless them? Lord, I saw some people who are experiencing homelessness under the bridge. Please bless them. God, I saw some people that did not look very happy while I was walking through the mall. They seemed so sad that if you ask me, I would say that they were depressed. Please heal their heart. There are so many things that we can do as children of God in our prayer lives, in petitioning God, in interceding as intercessors before the Lord for other people. Does God already know? Yes, he does. But that's a part of relationship. A part of relationship is communication, even when you already know. 
So the second point of our aim is that we are to use our faith. So we studied last week that the Bible teaches us we should use our faith to help others. Mark chapter 2 verses 4 through 5 is an example of friends helping a friend who desperately needed healing from Jesus and they were trying to get to Jesus any way that they could. There is a saying that desperate people do desperate things and that was the situation that these people seemed to be in. They wanted to get to Jesus. There was such a crowd before them. They couldn't press through the crowd. They had their friend on a pallet, on a bed, and he couldn't walk. And they knew if they just got him to Jesus, that he would be healed. Oh boy, doesn't that sound like the things that we hear in church? If we just get our problem to Jesus, we know that God will make it all right. If we just put this before the Lord, if we just press in in relationship, God will touch it and resolve it. Will he make things perfect? He will make things according to his perfect will and purpose. And as we know, that is the best for us because he is motivated by his love for us. So back to this scripture, I took a little bunny hole there. I was excited. So Mark chapter two, verses four through five, they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head, his head meaning Jesus. Then they lowered the man on his mat, and that was the pallet that I spoke of, right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. And when you continue, or yes, when you continue in that passage reading, it talks about how not only were his sins forgiven, and we'll talk about that a little later in a different reference verse, but he was also healed of being paralyzed. But notice what's uh, highlighted, seeing their faith. He did not mention the paralyzed man. He mentioned the faith of his friends and everything that they did, their faith getting him to Jesus. We can use our faith to help others. Faith is the currency, it's the exchange, it's what we use in heavenly things. In Life Source magazine, and I have my reference there, they talk about this in a portion of their article. Faith alone pleases God, and God has blessed everyone with a measure of faith, and we are able to use that faith to help others. So what's going on in our lesson today? The Apostle Paul is in Roman custody. He is on his way to testify before an official per his own request as a Roman citizen. He appealed to Caesar. Paul and the officers keeping watch over him are traveling by ship, which wrecked. They had a shipwreck. So we pick them up after they have wrecked in a ship. And just to clarify, Paul isn't the only one, the keepers of Paul, uh, the soldiers, they aren't the only one, or the guards, pardon me, aren't the only one, but there are other prisoners that are on this same boat. And this ship wrecked. They swim to the island, island, excuse me, of Malta. And this is where we pick up our lesson on the island with the indigenous people who offer them a lot of kindnesses. In other words, they're very hospitable to Paul, to the guards, to all of these prisoners. They offer them warmth by way of a fire. They offer them shelter. They offer them food. They don't know these people from nowhere. These people don't even look like them. They're different. And yet they are showing love. So while they were there, the people watched them. I mean, these are different people. They know that they're not from among them. 
and they saw a poisonous snake come out of the fire and bite Paul on the hand. So just to make it clear, and I heard this lesson taught a little while ago, and I thought that this point was very interesting and it's a valid point. So I want to share it with you as well. The snake didn't just bite Paul, but he fixed on Paul. Paul had to shake the snake off. So it was very apparent that when the snake bit Paul, latched on him and stayed latched on to him to where Paul had to shake him off, that the poison from the snake's fangs entered Paul's body. No doubt about that. At least that's the way it seemed. Let's keep looking at our lesson. So as a superstitious people, they believe that since the sea didn't kill Paul, that the gods were seeking to kill him another way to administer punishment for his crimes. They just judged Paul to be a murderer. And since he didn't die at the sea, hey, he was going to die another way because his crimes were going to... Um, his crimes were dictating that that would happen. He did bad things. Bad things were coming back to him. Paul shook off the beast into the fire and went about as if nothing had happened. And this was a testimony to the people. They didn't know at the time that it reflected the power of Jesus. So, as I stated, they didn't know this was the power of Jesus. These people worshiped idols and this was a demonstration of the true God. What I love about this part of our lesson is that Paul isn't seeking, he's not grandstanding, he's not standing on a soapbox saying, see the Lord my God heal me and then shake the snake off. He just lived his holy life before them and they saw the example his christian example before them and you know that's exactly what you do you don't stand before people saying hey god kept me from lying i told you the truth all day today you don't go back home to mom and dad and say hey god kept my hands down at my side i didn't punch out the bully today or you don't go home well some of us might do this after work saying hey god gave me peace and i didn't tell the person what i really thought about them i just prayed for them after coming home from work to your spouse or to your family but we just go and live our Christian holy life and people take notice of that. It may not be as something grand as shaking off a venomous snake, but you do show a difference when you don't follow the crowd and you follow Christ. So just a reminder of what idol is. Idol very simply defined is a false god. But also in today's culture, idol is also something that we allow to take the place of or rob us of time from God. If we take God down from number one and place him at number two, whatever we put in spot number one, that has become our idol. And as you can see, I have different pictures here. The pursuit of money seeking the acceptance of other people by not following the will of God. Seek our ambitions, whatever they are. Now, is it wrong to work hard and earn money, to have ambitions, to want to be accepted by our friends and family? No, none of those things are wrong. We want to be loved and accepted. We want to make sure that we're financially secure and we want to seek very wholeheartedly after our dreams and passions. Those are things that God has given us gifts and talents about. He's put them in our head. He's put them in our heart. But allowing those things to take the place of God, that's when it becomes wrong. That's when it becomes a mistake that's when it becomes an idol. And if we've done that, God gives us opportunity to switch it around. Take, the, take those things out of number one, put God back in number one, put those things number two. Seek God first and everything else will be added to you.
And this brings us to our golden text, Acts chapter 28, verse 8. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. In the New American Standard Bible, it reads this way, And it happened that the father of Publius was laying in bed afflicted with recurrent fever and dysentery. And Paul went in to see him, and after he had prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. So I don't know about you, I needed to go back and look up dysentery to make sure that I understood what it was. And dysentery was an infection, very severe diarrhea that contained, among other things, infectious material, which was mucus, in other versions it said pus, and it also in included blood in the feces or in the stool and a fever as well as stomach pain or abdominal pain. Now this is serious. It wasn't just like a flu. It wasn't just something that was passing. It wasn't just something that he ate and he can drink a lot of fluids and recover from it. He had an infection of his intestine and he was losing part of his life strength. He was losing blood. Now we know if we lose enough blood, the doctors recommend, our medical professionals recommend, hey, we need to build your blood cells back up because this has a very extreme effect on your body. You can get very sick. If you lose enough blood, you can have a heart attack, you can have stroke, and then other things happen as well. So the part of this man's life was just ebbing from him through this sickness. He was losing blood. The Bible says the life is in the blood and he was losing life. And Paul prayed for him. In James chapter 5, verses 14 through 15, it states, If anyone among you sick, or excuse me, is anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord, or excuse me, with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven so that was a part of our example in Mark when I said that his sins were forgiven and then later he was also healed I said we were going to talk about different reference scripture this is it right here but going back to Paul and him praying for Publius he laid his hands on him and he was healed. This was a miracle for these people. Remember, they didn't have aspirin back then. They didn't have Pepto-Bismol back then. They didn't have, um, I can't even think of the pink fluid right now. It starts with the P. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. They didn't have the magic pink fluid back then. They didn't have those things. Antibiotics, they had the herbs and God blessed them with knowledge of what to eat from the ground. But when you had such a serious illness like this where blood was leaving your body, it was a miracle that Paul would pray for them and they would receive their healing. This was a demonstration of the true God, not of the false gods that they served, but of the true God that Paul served. And he was able to tell them about Jesus. So the other thing that I want us to see is that these people were not disciples of Christ that received healing. These people did not receive healing because, as a benefit because they were children of God. Yes, we do have that benefit. Healing is the children's bread. But what I want you to see is that God blessed them as his creation. This opened a door for them to hear about the love of Jesus and the great sacrifice that he made. I tell you what. Somebody lays their hand on my dad and he gets up from the bed healed. I want to know how they did it. 
excuse me, somebody lays their hand on my mom, on my sister, on my brother, on my cousin, on my neighbor, and I know that they've been sick beyond re not well excuse me not beyond recovery but beyond anything that we were able to do for them for them to get up from that bed i want to know how they did it that opened up the door for the conversation now our bible does not tell us that that happened i'm sharing with you that when those things happen it opens up the door for conversation So in our conclusion, faith is the currency of heaven. As a child of God, you have a privilege that God hears you and you can use your faith to help others. Paul served God by being a willing vessel, showing care and compassion to people by prayer and allowing God to use him to lay his hands on Publius for healing. Miracles point to the power of God and his care. They are a demonstration of his ability to supernaturally meet needs in the lives of people, his creation. So for homework, read ahead for next week's lesson. And I want you to go back and review the scriptures that I had in our lesson today. Primarily, James chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. Next week, we're going to be talking about leading others by obeying God. The lesson text will be Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 through 12 and the golden text or our focus verse will be Exodus chapter 3 verse 10. Thank you so much for having joined me for Sunday School Online. I invite you to join me on the next time. Invite your family, invite your friends, invite your peers, invite your co-workers, and let's gather around this Word of God and learn more about the great love that Jesus has for us and the sacrifice that he made for us to be reconciled in right relationship with him, that true and free gift of salvation. So, I leave you with my borrowed saying from Veggie Tales. God made you special and he loves you very much. We'll see you on the next time. Bye.